Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 78, Top 2 per Industry, Part 2. All right, well, hey, last week, last week, Alex had asked, is there a way to show the top two customers per industry? And I used a pivot table using the top 10 filter. Mike used uh, sort and filter. There is other ways of doing this. There's uh, uh, formula methods, and I'm going to use one of the brand new functions in Excel 2010 called aggregate. Now, aggregate, similar to subtotal that we've had since Excel 97, uh, in that we have these function numbers 1 through 11, same as in subtotal, but hey, check this out. They added function numbers 12 through 19. And a little known fact, 12 through 19 are allowed to have an array out here. Uh, so I'm going to use large. What is large? Large is just like max, which was there in subtotal. But large is, allows us to say we want the largest value or the second largest value or the third largest value. All right. Uh, second item, what are we going to do? We're going to ignore the error values. Error values? There are no error values over there. Oh, yes, there are. Um, at least there will be by the time I build the range that we're going to add up. Okay, so the uh, range of amounts here starts in C2, Control Shift down arrow, C194. I'll press F4 to lock that. All right, that's one term. Divided by, now check this out right here on the fly. I'm going to create a Boolean array uh, in the divisor. I'm going to say we want to look at all of the values from A2 down to A194, see if they're equal to, in quotes, a. All right, so what's that going to do? That's going to take the numeric value. If this is true, true turns into a 1, so it's the numeric value divided by 1. Beautiful. If it's false, numeric value divided by false turns into a 0. That becomes a division by 0 error, and because back here in the 6, I said, hey, ignore the error values, bam, it goes away. Uh, and then, do we want the first largest value or the second largest value. I'm going to put the 2 in there just to see if we can get the second largest value. So what that, what that is saying is for industry A, the second largest value should be 2. Let's do a quick little check here. We'll sort by industry. Uh, there's the A's. Bam! It works. It's the second largest value. I can't believe it. All right, so I took that formula and I, I um, changed it around a little bit to uh, parameterize it. All right, so that way uh, we're looking through the same range all the time, but see if it's equal to E5. In other words, the value over here in column E, put a dollar sign just before the E, and then for the first largest value or the second largest value, F dollar sign 4 to freeze it to row 4. And there we have for every industry the largest value and the second largest value. All right, Mike, let's take a look at your uh, array formula. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, that aggregate. That is beautiful. I love the aggregate function in 2010. If you want to do the same thing in earlier versions and didn't have aggregate, you could simply do the same Boolean logic that uh, Mr. Excel did. You say, is anything in that column equal to the A with the column locked? Then please give me everything in this column. Uh, and then the large, uh, again, we're looking at 1 when we go over here or 2. So you could do it that way, and then this is an array. Because there's a if function has more than one true or false, so you have to control shift enter. You can see the curly brackets up there and copy it down and over. You know, I totally misinterpreted Alex's question. It says, is there a way to show the top two customers? I thought he wanted these. Now that's hard. Uh, let's see if we can do it over here. This may be too much for a video, but uh, how about equals if? This, uh, I want this to turn over. I want to be able to put a two, 1 or a 2 or a 3 here and just have pop out the customers, the actual names of the customers. So I'm going to say columns. And I'm sitting in F6. So I'm going to say dollar sign F6 colon F6. Anytime that's a number increment, it goes 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Anytime that is greater than this with an F4, what do I want? That means I'm past the 2, the second column, I want blank. All right, comma, and then the value of false. What's well, a gigantic lookup form formula? And it is an array formula. The array, well, what are we looking up? The customer, control shift down arrow F4, comma. And this is going to get pretty wild here. We're going to have to do a bunch of stuff, but we need a row number. Now, here's the situation. We actually have two criteria, but um, so we need to find 
an A in this column, and then a B in this column, and then a C. But over here, we can't just say, look at some value. We have to actually have to isolate some of the values in this column. So we're going to have actually two criteria when we get to the second criteria, which is the second biggest. We're going to have to say, whichever ones in this column are A, please give me the first and second biggest ones. All right, so this is going to get wild. In the row, I'm going to use small. The small function will allow us uh, to take the first um, smallest row number, the second smallest row number, and the third smallest row number, because we're looking up names here, and we need to know the actual row eventually. Now, the for this array, we're going to have a bunch of ifs. So I'm going to say if anything in this column, Control Shift Down on F4, is equal to this with the column locked. All right, ready? That's the first condition. Then, comma, there's another condition. Remember, we said 1, 2. And the second one's going to be pretty wild here. If anything in this column, Control Shift Down our F4, is greater than or equal to, and we're going to have to use the large function, large. Remember, we want the two biggest ones. So that's why we have two ifs in front of inside this small. Uh, to get the A's or the B's, and then to get the second, the two biggest ones for A or B, et cetera. So large. Well, watch this. Inside the large, I can't just say, give me the two biggest. I'm going to ha actually have to repeat the if again and say, is anything in this column equal to this one? All right. So if that's the case, what do I want to dump into the large function? These numbers. So all this is done so far inside the large. Here's the screen tip right here. I just said, if anything matches an A, then give me this range. So it's dumping, in essence, we can see over here just these four values. So that's what the large function is receiving. All right. Uh, and then that's the if. So I'm going to close that off here. The K, I have to say, um, comma, and the k we want is 2, the second biggest. Now notice, we're comp for the small, we took this range, and we had to look through it again with the large, but say, give me the second biggest. So, and by the way, I have to hit F4. But I'm asking anything in this range greater than or equal to the second biggest uh, largest value for the a's. Now I'm going to close this large off. Right? So this whole thing right here, this little large F9, is just giving me the second biggest value for the A's. Control Z. All right? OK, that was pretty wild. So we have two ifs now. Now we can go comma. And what's the ultimate thing we're trying to put into the index row argument? A row number. Well, those are the two conditions. Remember, all the A's, the two biggest ones for all the A's. So now I need to put some row numbers. I'm going to, you can highlight whichever one columns. I'm going to highlight these, Control Shift Down or F4. Now that would give me 2, 3, 4. That's not what I want, so I have to subtract row from it, that one. Now it's 2 minus 2, and I'm going to hit F4. So I have to add one back in. If you highlight this whole little bit right here and hit F9, you can, well, that's a lot of junk. Maybe you can't see. Up here, you can see 1, 2, 3. So it's all the row numbers for this huge data set, Control Z, but no problem. We're only picking. Uh, potentially three of them for each particular row. All right, that's what we're putting into the small. So I'm going to close parentheses on the first if. I don't see a black, so I'm going to close. Well, I don't see that brown one, right? Ah, now we're back to small. All of that just to get some row numbers, comma. And I'm going to use the same incrementer here, copy for the k. Because as the small goes this way, I need the set first smallest, second smallest, third smallest row number that matches our two criteria. All right, ready? Close that off. And the screen tip goes to index that row number. That's what's there. Actually, interesting thing here, we're, oh yeah, we're getting row numbers here. So that's exactly what we want. Close parenthesis on that. Close parenthesis on the if, because the index is the false. Close parenthesis, Control Shift Enter. And I'm praying this works. Copy this over and down. Now I'm going to change this to a 3. And there it is. I'm going to change it to a 1, change it to a 2. And one other thing, the reason why we had to do this um, first little if here, because it seems like we don't have to do it, is just in case there's duplicates. So I'm going to copy this value right here. 
So there's two duplicates for A, and we should get 8, 3, 7, 5, and 1, 1, and we do. And if there's duplicates here, so the B now both has the same item. So this formula is not getting confused for the fact that there's multiple duplicates here. Is that right? Uh, for B. Oh, yeah, it's, it is working. It's uh, these two right here now. Uh, so that's pretty wild. Maybe I got totally confused on uh, Alex's question, but I have been sick for weeks. So uh, all right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Well, that was crazy. Hey, to learn how to do formulas like that, buy this book, Slang Excel Dragons. That's wild. To learn how to do what we did last week, buy this book, Pivot Tables, and all kinds of other good stuff. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel. Excel is fun.